Hey, what's up, folks? This is Shahil. So, for the longest time, I've been using this phone. This is the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. This phone still works fine, and this phone has mediocre specs as uh, related to 2020 standards. This phone has an Exynos 8890 octa core processor inside. This phone has a Mali T880 uh, GPU inside. It has 4 gigs of RAM and a 12 MP camera and a 5 MP selfie shooter. And it also has 3600 mAh of battery. But the main problem with this phone was that Samsung had ditched support for this phone since like 2019. So Android 8 was the last taste of Android that this phone got. And even though they're providing security updates every once in a while, it's not enough to take the experience to that next level and get a new Android version for phones like these. So then, since the warranty is already finished and support is well finished way long ago, the only sensible thing to do is to flash a custom ROM in this phone. And that is exactly what I did. I went ahead and installed Lineage OS 17.1 on this phone. So this video is going to be about my experience using a custom ROM and a few different things. But before we begin, let me tell you that I'm not responsible for anything that you do with your phone and trying to install custom ROMs can sometimes be dangerous and if you're not careful enough, you could end up breaking your phone. So I recommend you to do it at your own risk and don't keep me in mind while you're doing it. But if you're tech savvy enough like me and then you're confident to, you know, take the risk and do it and if you have the confidence that you're going to do it right i'll put all the links that you'd ever need in the description down below i used a tutorial for this and i'd also leave the link for the tutorial down below so that you can follow along just like the way it did so custom roms 101 what why how and should so what is a custom rom let me answer that custom rom is a flavor of android version which is tailor made for your phone but only that it's not made by your manufacturer and it's not developed or maintained by your manufacturer. By this, I mean a third-party developer makes a ROM which is based on the latest Android version hopefully for your phone which can take your Android experience to the next level which your manufacturer never gave you. And talking about custom ROMs, there are different flavors of custom ROMs. So if you want that stock Android Google Pixel experience, you could use something like a Pixel Experience ROM which is gonna get your phone and make it stick to that stock Android Google Pixel level but still give you very nice experience and an enjoyable experience using your phone. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, there are ROMs which give you ultimate customization and endless customization like Resurrection Remix or CoreOS OS. So the lineage OS that we're talking about today lies somewhere in between both of those. It offers some customization but not everything. And it still manages to keep things to that stock Android level, which is something that I really love about ROMs. So why? Why people flash a custom ROM? Well, good question. The reason why most people flash a custom ROM is just like I mentioned, if the software support for your phone is already ended, the only sensible thing to do is that to flash a custom ROM considering that the warranty has already been voided or had been ended for your phone. If yes, a custom ROM would be great. But people also do it for another reason, that is to combine good hardware with endless customization. Let's say that you have a phone like the Redmi K20 Pro, which is known amongst developers, and it has serious hardware inside it, so it can also do endless customization if paired with the right custom ROM. And how do you do it? Well, first of all, it's not straightforward. Second of all, if you're in the warranty period, you're gonna avoid the warranty. Third thing, it's not, you know, that safe as you might think. And fourth thing, this is not a guide. You can use other videos, like I mentioned, it's in the description. You could use that to see how to flash a custom ROM on the Galaxy S7 Edge specifically. And then the last question, should you flash a custom ROM? Well, the answer being this video. This video is an answer to that question. Should you flash a custom ROM? And also my experiences using a custom ROM and I'm going to be sharing that with you so you're going to be getting a good idea about should you flash a custom ROM on a phone like the S7 Edge which is years old by now. So let's talk about the features of Lineage OS 17.1. Okay, so this is a ROM which is running on top of Android 10. Like I said, 
it sticks to that AOSP level, not so much customization, but still things uh, are minimal in this ROM and it's manageable. There's no heavy skin, it runs on Pixel Launcher, more or less like Pixel Experience, but still it elevates those features and gives you like a bit of customization, which is handy sometimes. And then there's that gorgeous dark mode in this phone and also just a navigation. And this is something which I really like and which was really only nailed in Android 10. Android 9 had poor gestures when compared to like iPhones and in Android 10, it's actually good. Another thing is that this ROM supports Widevine L1. So your phone supports Widevine L1 compared uh, with this ROM, you could actually stream HD content in Netflix and Amazon Prime Video and services like that. And like I said, it has a few customization options, but it's not as intensive or not as crazy as something like Resurrection Remix. Let's talk about hardware in this phone. So talking about hardware, the Wi-Fi works really well. I don't think that the Wi-Fi has any effect or any influence over this ROM. I get speeds like I normally should get. I'm pretty satisfied with the Wi-Fi on this phone. It's reliable. It's a robust connection. So I didn't really experience any kind of connection loss or problems with connections. And so is Bluetooth and Bluetooth in this ROM is actually working very well. Actually, I tried connecting this to a Bluetooth earphones and it worked totally fine. Again, the connection was robust, so no problem there. And also this ROM supports NFC. They say that it supports wireless charging. I don't have a wireless charging pad, so I couldn't really try it, but I think that it works. Now let's talk about cameras. Cameras are not really a strong suit of custom ROMs. It has never been like that. You want to get a custom ROM, it's probably because you want endless customization or you want to keep things, uh, you know, to that stock Android level. But this ROM is no different. So the camera in here is actually a Google camera 4.4 version. It's very old by now. It doesn't have HDR plus and also the selfie camera is kind of broken. So every time I open the selfie camera, the app crashes. There is a solution though. It's called Gcam mode. I've already made a video about that, which you can watch by clicking over here. But again, HDR plus is, you know, in the Gcam mode app, it's not reliable. Like things are in that bells and whistles here. Now let's talk about performance. Performance in this phone is actually great. I have never experienced like this ROM has underclocked my CPU nor overclocked my CPU because I hadn't experienced any kind of heat with this phone. Gaming, talking about games like Among Us, which is really famous in the quarantine time, it works really good. And also other, you know, day-to-day -day usage like multitasking, it was fine. 4GB RAM, it's a limitation, but for everyday use cases, it's fine and it should work like it normally would on a stock ROM. Let's talk about battery. Okay, so this is where things get really interesting. This was one of the least expected parts of the ROM, but the most impressive part of the ROM, at least for me. The battery life in this phone was actually subpar, I'd say. I got around 4 hours of screen on time, which isn't that great when you're looking at 2020 standards. 5 hours of screen on time is really good. Anything about that is exceptional. This ROM actually gets around five to five and a half hours of screen on time on average. So my daily use cases are online classes, YouTube, Netflix, and a lot of web browsing, social media like Instagram, Twitter, and you know, day-to-day -day use cases. The best ever battery life that I got with this ROM was six hours and about six hours and 10 minutes. That, that part really impressed me by the way. Because getting like 6 hours of screen on time on a ROM like this, it's kind of unexpected, it's unheard, so it's really good. But although the battery life is great when you use it, when you don't use it, when it's in your pocket, it actually is running out pretty fast, you know. Uh, when I charge the phone every day night, and then when I wake up morning at, you know, 7, 7.45, that time around, and the 100% battery, which has been, you know, in the night time, would be around 86 or 89% battery, which isn't that great if you had to tell you. But all in all, what was earlier a half day phone is now comfortably a full day phone. Let's come back to that question, you know, should you flash a custom ROM? I think that you get a pretty good idea in this video, but if you didn't, the bottom line being, if you're able to make that compromise of camera, you should probably flash this custom ROM and then 
get a taste of Android 10. And if you don't like it, you can flash it back to the normal ROM, which again isn't straightforward, but it's totally doable. But with that said, I think I'm going to flash this back to its normal ROM. The reason being, with all those features like dark theme, just navigation, remarkable battery life, and then the all amazing experience of Android 10, it's not enough to convince me that the camera in this ROM is not that great. But, you know, flashing back to the custom ROM, Android 8, you know, hardware keys, no just navigation, normal experience, Samsung experience UI, <laughs> that makes me want to stay to this ROM, but hmm, you'll see. Anyway, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment down below anything we should think about this video or any doubt or any opinions or anything. Hit the comment section, I'd be glad to give you a reply. Thanks for watching and until we meet the next time, goodbye.